All right, next comic coming up to the stage, Austin Hanna. Ah, hello. Hello. Hey. Hey. Uh, so, uh, what is up with blind people, right? They think they're so fucking cool with their sunglasses and their canes and shit. It's like, come on, man. Like, I don't know. And like, uh, <laughs> and when I see blind people, I gotta be honest, I kind of secretly ho hope that they, are, they fuck up because then they, they would never know and it would just be personal satisfaction for me. Like I would just, like when I'm like, I, I see blind people around sometimes, you know, the ones who are brave enough to walk around a fucking city with a stick. And, uh, and in the back of my head, I'm just like, man, what if that guy tripped or like walked into a fire hydrant? It wouldn't be funny particularly, but it would just be like, I would know. And I would keep it, I would keep it in my heart. <laughs> And then, like, I feel really bad for blind people because they wear sunglasses for literally no reason. Like, it's not fucking, it's not bright to them. They're blind. Like, we just put sunglasses on their face for our own benefit. Like, we're just like, your eyes look really, really fucked up, so we're going to put glasses on you. Like that's, that's like, that's like the first thing they do to blind people. They're like, oh, you're blind? Well, here's some fucking glasses so nobody has to see your weird eyes. Like, that's so insensitive. Like... They should at least lie to them and be like, you're shooting fucking lasers out of your eyes, man. We gotta put them in. <laughs> you don't know what's going on out here, buddy. It's apocalypse. <laughs> um, like, going blind would be so awful. I read about this guy who went blind because he shot himself. He was trying to commit suicide. He shot himself in the head with a nail gun four times. And he survived. And it's just like, how many times, like, that's it. That's the number of nails you can take in your head before you're like, I gotta go to the fucking doctor. <laughs> I'm not gonna die. I made a really terrible decision. There's nails in my fucking head. I've made a terrible call on this suicide. I should use a real gun. <laughs> um, so I made a really big mistake the other day. I ate a family-sized box of nerds. <laughs> And if you didn't know they made family size boxes of nerds, neither did I, until I went to the grocery store and I thought, I bet I could eat all those nerds. <laughs> and so I bought it. I was like, oh, so we'll see how this goes. I ate it in like a day and a half. It was probably the worst thing I ever did in my life. Um, <laughs> and the weird thing about a family size box of nerds is that its serving size is 11, which is like a 1900s like Irish immigrant family. Like, who the fuck? Like, who's eating, like... And nerds is fucking kidding themselves. I think families are sitting down eating fucking nerds together. Like, that never happens. <laughs> this is for your all-purposes all nerds dinner for your family. In case you just eat bowls of nerds. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I ate all these nerds and I threw them up the next day and they were still nerds. That's the weirdest thing. Like, when you eat nerds, nothing happens inside your body. They just are nerds and then they come out as nerds. <laughs> There's no processing nerds. It's just your body's like, get this shit out as fast as we can. <laughs> um, so, uh, God, I wish these old women hadn't left. I have some good historical jokes here. I'm big, like, I'm a, I'm a big film buff. My favorite film is the Zap Reuter film. I always say it was uh, Zap Reuter's best film. And if you guys don't know about that, you need to go look up the JFK assassination on Wikipedia. Um... <laughs> All right, so people say that anti-gravity isn't true, but that cannot be right because I fucking hate gravity. It is just such a real bitch. Gravity has foiled me so many times. <laughs> like, my, it's probably my number one enemy. And I thought me and gravity were cool, but no, we're not. I, fa I fall, I drop things. It's a fucking bitch. Yeah, forget about that. <laughs> um, I hate tallies. I think they're a completely stupid way to count. Why would you ever tally anything unless you were on a fucking island by yourself forever to count your days away till you're dead? That or a board game, that's the only time you ever use tallies in your life. So I'm going to start bringing it back and start counting in tallies, doing math in tallies, and I'm going to take up as much real estate as I can with my counting. <laughs> and uh, another thing I don't get are rape whistles. Are those even real? Does anybody have a rape whistle? No? No? You seen one? Yeah. Did you? Okay, that's enough. Uh, <laughs> um, 
I don't understand why rape whistles exist because it seems like the least efficient way of signifying that you're being raped. Because so many people whistle and nobody is ever like, what's going on? I better go check out that whistle. <laughs> is that a whistle in the distance? I better just drop what I'm fucking doing. Somebody's getting raped out there. No, most people think there's like a child soccer game or something going on. Like that's nothing you need to be worried about ever. And I realized the only reason I know rape whistles are ineffective is because one night I was in my bed and I heard a whistle in the distance and the only thing I thought was, Jesus, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to go to sleep. And then I realized the next day the only time anybody blows a whistle at three in the morning, it's gotta be a rape or just a really flamboyant man like walking through the streets or some shit like that. I guess that could be a reason to blow a whistle. Um, and, uh, all right, I'll end on this. I, uh, I love gay people. I'm all about the gays. I'm all about the gay plight. And, uh... I'm with them, man. So, <laughs> one day I was in Los Angeles. Let me back up. There was, I was on OkCupid, right? And I, because I'm pathetic and I tried to find people online, because I'm a creepy guy. And, uh, but the worst part about the story is that I only got one message on OkCupid and it was from a gay guy. <laughs> and I was like, well, I don't want to seem homophobic, so I guess I'll talk to him. And so... <laughs> And so the conversation was going pretty good, and he was like, what are you up to? And I was like, oh, I'm on okay, keep it. And I was like, what are you up to? And he was like, jerking. And I was like, all right, man, that's... That's where we draw the line. All right, that's enough chat. Um, wow. Yeah, wow. Uh, so, but I'll end on this. One time I was in Los Angeles, and uh, this gay guy was our waiter, and he was like, where are you from? And I was like, Virginia. And I was like, oh, cool, yeah, you ever been? He was like, no, I don't think they'd like me there. And I was like, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty close-minded, man. So I said, listen up, you ignorant faggot. <laughs> you gotta expand your worldview, man. All right, that's it, my time, thanks. Keep it going, keep it going for Austin Hanna. And your next comic coming up to the stage, Jaye Toller. All right, all right, okay. We'll need to clap and let's go. Uh, I don't like women who breast stink. Like, that's just not cool. Like, I mean, like, I had to, shut up. I'm trying to get this mic straight. Y'all see me fumbling with it, just kiss my ass. That will probably get this breast stink. But I don't like it, like, I had this girl, like, before we kiss, I used to, like, pour Listerine in my mouth. But then I, like, hold it. And then I kiss her, and I, like, slowly seep Listerine into her mouth. But then I'd be making her think I'm aggressive. Like, I grab the back of her head, and then, like, grab her neck just a little bit. But then I squeeze. So then she'd cough and make her goggle. Like, whatever. Yeah, that was the end of that. Oh, my bad. That was part of it. I'm, I'm going to refer to my phone as I do these jokes. I've been drinking. So y'all going to bear with me. Um, so yeah, so that, yeah, stinky breath bitches, I don't like them. And that's, that's, that's what I'm getting at with the story. Like, like if she sleep, like I used to like throw Tic Tacs in her mouth like when she snores. So we can, what are, y'all not, all right, fuck it. I ain't going to talk about women. <laughs> Like y'all, y'all, y'all looking like y'all like stinky breath women. Like whatever, I just don't like it. And, you know, I'll be just doing sneaky shit to try to get them to not stink. So, all right. <laughs> no, that's what I like. I don't like. I don't like dumb women. Like, like that's that's like a real turn off. I went on this first date with this girl, and she's like, "Tell me something that you would normally tell a woman on a first date." I'm like, "Okay, boo. I uh, I I have sickle cell trait." And she started crying. She's like, "Oh my God, how long do you have?" I was like, what? I was like, no, 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 babe. I got sick of some trait, not anemia. Anemia is a disease. And she was like, so what do you do to keep it from becoming anemia? I'm like, oh my, bitch, I take Tylenol. Like, <laughs> like for y'all, you can't just catch sick of, whatever. Some of y'all just, all right. <laughs> whatever. I'm gonna keep this going. This is an open mic. That's a I'm disclaimer. Shut up, bitch. All right. <laughs> I don't even know what he said. I just don't like people yelling at me when I'm trying to tell jokes that work or don't work. I don't like fucking general traffic court judges. I don't like them either. Like those people, they're, they're some pieces of shit. I hate them. Like, judge told me, he's like, man, how the fuck you get so many traffic 
violation tickets. I'm like, I don't know. Your cops are like fucking super cops. I don't know what the fuck is going on. And he was like, you can't drive anymore. Your license is suspended forever. I was like, what the fuck? He was like, dude, you can't, you can't walk, ride skates, skateboard. He was like, nigga, if I catch you on the bus, I'm gonna give you a ticket. I was like, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> nah, I appreciate the laugh. I do. I'm sorry. All right. I used to work for Capital One. I ain't gonna tell the Capital One joke that I normally tell, but what I will say, shut up. Don't clap at that. Fuck Capital One. They fucking fired me. That was the joke that I'm not gonna tell. Sh shut up. All right. Shut up, motherfucker. All right. But after they fired me, they sent me a friend request on Facebook. So I'm thinking it's like some alumni employee like shit. So I accept the friend request. Then they start sending me messages about a car loan that I had through them that I was late on. I was only late one month. I'm like, but, but first of all, uh, bill collectors shouldn't be on Facebook. Second of all, I'm only one month late. Like, then they start like posting videos of people's car getting repossessed and tagging me in the videos. <laughs> like, Jay, in two months, you're next. I'm like, fuck you, bitch. I fucking, I hated that shit. There's another joke that I'm gonna start, but I'm not gonna tell because I got like a second inning. Shut up. All right. I tell a joke about masturbating to the Power Rangers, like to um to the girls of the shut up to the girls of the Power Rangers, not like to the dudes. But uh, I ain't gonna tell that joke. But what I want to say about that is that, like I used to imagine the girls like at my crib, like when I come home, I'd be like it's morphin time, and like I like unbuckle my belt. And then I'd be like, now make my monster grow. Like, and that only makes sense if you know the Power Rangers, because that's what Rita used to say. It's like, make it. All right. I understand how half-assed these jokes are, and I apologize, but y'all gonna roll with me until I finish. The next time y'all see these jokes, they'll be crafted. I'm from Southside, uh, Richmond. I love living in the South Side. I don't like some of the businesses. Like I go to this pup hut. It's on. Um, I don't even know if they have any pup hut anywhere else in America. But there's this pup hut on Melodian Turnpike in South Side, and I go there, and it's like the most rundown piece of shit that I've ever seen. Like, like only ten of the arcades work, and I remember this one arcade. I put a quarter in it, and the machine next to it came on. I'm like, what the fuck? I got enough of this arcade portion. Let me just try to do this pop up. Let me try to play this golf. I go outside. They didn't even have any golf balls. All they had was pool balls. I'm like, y'all using pool balls to play golf? It was niggas out there hustling using pool golf lingo. It was like eight ball, 19th green, under par. And I'm like, what the fuck? All right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Good night. My name is Johnny Antone. <laughs> Welcome back, Kwame. Here we go. Thank you, Jaye. All right, Cafe Dam, we made it. We're down to the last comic. Please clap together. Please clap for Morris Reese. Scream! Oh, shit. All right. Woo, thank you guys for fucking staying this entire time. Jesus Christ. Who set this shit up? Like 900 people here telling jokes. Ugh. Oh, man. Uh, this is not my first time at Cafe Diem. Uh, I actually got fired from here. <laughs> that's a true, that's very true. Yeah. Uh, it's all right, though. Getting fired from Cafe Diem was like being the first person kicked off the biggest loser. It was rough. It was like, you know what I mean? Like, you didn't even know, like, the fat dude in the back who didn't know it was a challenge. And they're like, run, fatties, get to the house. And he, like, picks up his bag. He's the last one there. And they're like, you're going home? <laughs> Sorry. Nah, I'm not mad about it, though, actually. I was fucking horrible at my fucking job. Oh, my God. So bad. It, it, that's, and that's the worst way to get fired, I think. Uh, <laughs> when you go in and they're like, you're fired. And you're like, that was uh, an intelligent fiscal decision. Uh, please, good day, sir. Uh, <laughs> no fun. This is fun, turns out. 
Are there any white people here tonight? Oh, man. Something that Obama ruined for white people was the ability to cast a black president in their movies and seem progressive. <laughs> like the first time they did it, like have you guys seen uh, 24? And they have like, they cast the guy from the Geico commercials in that, like the black guy. And they did it, like when he came on screen, you were like, he could be president, holy shit! Like he could be, like, the pre like now it's gotta be like, the next time, like the next time people are gonna be surprised when the president walks on screen is gonna be Margaret Cho. And people will be like, holy shit, Margaret Cho's president? I don't care. All right, I'm gonna get up. Uh, fucking, I can't believe you guys stayed this whole time. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna finish. Up. I, don't know. I was reading this thing uh, online. It's not. Re it's not really current at all. I don't do current materials. So fuck you if you expected that. Um, it was this dude. It was a Japanese guy, and he cut off his own penis and balls. And that's true. He did. Um, and then he kept it. Well, he didn't do, okay, uh, he went to a doctor, and a doctor cut off his penis and balls and kept it. I don't know how, I'm not up to date on the latest uh, penis retention technology. I don't know what they kept it in, how they made it work. Um, but he kept it, he kept that shit. And then he did what I think is the third most, like, baller shit you could do with your penis and balls after you cut it off at the doctor's is that he, okay, the second most ball shit you could do after you cut your penis and balls off is to like make a Jesus piece out of that shit. With this penis and ball sack. I don't know, chrome plate out, rose gold. I don't know, I don't know rappers. I don't know what they do. But, uh, and the first most, the first most ball shit you could do with your penis and balls after you get it cut off at the doctor's is to make a Jesus piece and then like two testicle earrings. <laughs> No, he didn't do that. He did the third, third most baller shit though. He he cooked his penis and balls, uh, up, like a dinner, and he like fed it to people. He did that shit, and like uh, it was fucking it was fucking wild because <laughs> it was fucking wild. And uh, five he he uh, he sold tickets to it, and he had an event. Uh, six people signed up to eat this man's penis and balls. And five people showed up to eat this man's penis and balls. I couldn't believe that shit. I was like, no way, you guys are gonna eat this dude's penis and balls. And then I thought, how awkward would it be if you didn't like it? <laughs> no, sir, thank you for going through the hassle of chopping off your penis and balls, but it's not my thing. No, it's not delicious. All right, I don't know, that's my time. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Thanks, Morris. Give it up for Morris. Yeah! That was very good. Uh, all the comedians are very good. This, uh, I mean, my opinion is that the show was awesome tonight. What'd you guys think? Yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, if you if you if you aren't already, what? What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. Let's have more comics, right? Um, <laughs> If you haven't already, please like Cafe Diem on Facebook. Uh, I will then send you uh, an invitation to be my friend just so I can send you invites to remind you when this happens, which is every uh, other week. So in two Mondays, be right back here. Thank you all again, and please remember to tip Tony. Uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks, guys. Woo!